Here are today's top stories. The president says not only heads will roll, but both Mainilad and Manila Water may lose their contracts if the water crisis is not resolved. The Sandigan Bayan gives Jingo Estrada and Janet Lim Napoles a chance to seek the dismissal of their plunder cases. The Court of Appeals denied Senator Antonio Trillanes' plea to temporarily stop the hearing of the reopened rebellion charges against him. And environmental group Greenpeace expresses alarm over the death of marine animals due to plastics. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. President Rodrigo Duterte has ordered the MWSS, Manila Water, and Maynila to explain how the water shortage happened. The president said not only heads will roll, but both concessionaires may lose their contracts if the water crisis is not resolved. Here is our report. President Duterte has threatened to fire officials of the MWSS and terminate two water concessionaires' contracts if they fail to properly explain the reason for the water shortage in Metro Manila. In his meeting with MWSS, officials of Maynilad and Manila Water in Malacanang on Tuesday night, President Duterte is said to be outraged, saying he is not going to listen to excuses of these officials because they knew of the problem but did not prevent it from happening. The president ordered MWSS and the concessionaires to submit a report before April 7. The water shortage started affecting residents in Metro Manila in the second week of March. Both chambers of Congress have held probes to look into the water shortage issue and mall filing class suit against Manila Water for its alleged negligence. MWSS said the shortage is due to the increase on demand on top of the early onslaught of the dry season but admitted government is partly to blame. Panelo says the president expressed hope that at the end of the day, the water crisis was not just a matter of a common sense. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Rom Dulfo. Malacanang says the alternative proposal reportedly offered by a Japanese company to build the Kaliwa Dam project will be left to the judgment call of President Rodrigo Duterte. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo says his office will look into the proposal of Osaka-based global utility development even as the contract with China regarding Kaliwa Dam is already a done deal. The Japanese firm claims that their proposed low-level water intake will address safety concerns and will be more economical for the government. Panelo says there may be reasons why the price offered by the Chinese company is higher than the Japanese firm. The Philippines will not rejoin the International Criminal Court while President Duterte is the chief executive. Malacanang made this reaction after Assembly of State Parties President Ogon Kwan of the Republic of Korea expressed hope that the departure of the Philippines from the Rome Statute is temporary and that it will rejoin in the future. The Philippines' decision to leave the ICC came shortly after the ICC Office of the Prosecutor said in February last year that it would examine drug war-related allegations against Duterte to determine if it has jurisdiction to investigate. Panelo says the country has a robust judicial system and President Duterte can be sued in local courts after the end of his term. He also dismissed views that the country's withdrawal from the ICC would deprive Filipinos of an international venue for legal accountability for future post-withdrawal crimes against humanity, war crimes, and genocide. The Rome Statute says when there is a preliminary investigation, and or proceeding relative to that, then if this was started prior to the withdrawal of a state party, then the ICC can proceed. But there is no preliminary investigation to speak of, only a preliminary examination. The Philippine government reiterates its commitment to address illegal drug problem in the country. PCOO Assistant Secretary Ramon Qualoping III made the statement at the 62nd session of the Commission on Narcotics Drugs held in Vienna, Austria. 
He says the anti-illegal drug campaign of President Duterte is a long-term investment for the country. The Philippine delegation to Vienna articulated the country's whole-of-nation approach in addressing the drug problem using the Philippine Anti-Illegal Drug Strategy, or PADS. Meanwhile, Foreign Affairs Secretary Teddy Luxin Jr. emphasized the Philippines' zero-tolerance policy while citing the more than 1.4 million Filipino drug users undergoing rehabilitation and the corresponding 30% decline in the nation's crime rate. The toll rate hike at NLEX, which is supposedly effective today, has been put on hold. And the MRT is set to undergo maintenance this Holy Week. More on these and other news around the Metro from Miguel Hill. Metro Pacific Tollways Corporation put on hold the toll hike at the North Luzon Expressway, which was scheduled today. According to NLEX, they have not yet received a notice to collect despite the approval of the Toll Regulatory Board. Meanwhile, the MRT-3 will be unavailable this Holy Week. The MRT maintenance will start on Holy Monday, April 15 and end on Easter Sunday, April 21. 18 new air conditioning units have arrived and will be installed in MRT coaches. In other news, police arrested four men in a buy-bust operation in Malabon City. Authorities yielded the marked money and 14 more sachets of suspected shabu. They will be charged with violation of the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Miguel Hill. Still to come, the Philippines' budget surplus grew nearly fourfold in January this year. And Bacolod City will hire over 1,000 youth this summer. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. in terms of media policy. So, number one is media policy. Ano po yung media policy natin? Administrative order number one, presidential task force of security. Yan po ay sinampi ng PC. Executive order number two, freedom of information. Yan po ay sinampi din po ng PC. Mga itong policy yan, yung bridging media and government. This is Secretary Martin Andalaman. You're watching. Bakit po mahal ganyan ang tatlo ito? At dapat, bakit kailangan nyo intindihin na mag-uwi? Sapagat ito po ay para sa inyo. FOI, pinapalakas po nito yung right to information na nakasaan po sa ating konstitusyon. Ngayon po ay pwede na kayong sumulat, online, alamin po ano yung mga informasyon na gusto nyo malaman para sa inyong mga polong, sa inyong mga programa, etc. Task Force on Security. Nasa konstitusyon, nasa konstitusyon din po natin ang press freedom. Pero hindi po garantid yung safety ng media. Dahil po sa Presidential Task Force of Security na tayo po ay naaalalayan, nagagabayan ng PT Fox. Kaya nga po, noong December, ay nagpadala po ng uh, report. Nag-release yung report. Yung Reporters Without Borders, o RSF. At uh, sinabi ng RSF, o Reporters Sans Frontiers, ng uh, Paris, na wala na ho sa listahan ng Pilipinas sa mga pinakadelikatong bansa para sa mga jobs ko. At ito po ay na-attribute ko sa mga pulisya ni Pangulong Digong. Sabi po ni President Duterte, kailangan uh, panglagahan ang buhay ng media. Pinirmahan niya po yung AO number no. 1, Presidential Task Force New Security. The Sandigan Bayan 5th Division has given Senatorial Bet Jingoy Estrada and alleged pork barrel scam mastermind Janet Limnapolis a chance to seek the dismissal of their plunder cases. 
The defendants may ask for the outright dismissal of their cases without having to present counter evidence. Both are given 10 days to file their demurrer or objection to evidence that may get them acquitted of plunder. A demurrer seeks the dismissal of a case based solely on weak evidence by the prosecution. Estrada and Apolas are facing charges in connection to the 183 million peso pork barrel scam. The anti graft court earlier acquitted former Senator Bong Revilla but convicted his aide Richard Cambe along with Napoles. Estrada was allowed bail in 2017. The Court of Appeals has denied Senator Antonio Trillanes' bid to temporarily stop the hearing of the reopened rebellion charges against him. The CA 9th Division denied the application for a temporary restraining order filed by Trillanes' counsel. The CA gave the Department of Justice 10 days to comment on the resolution and 5 days for Trillanes to reply. Meanwhile, the Makati City Regional Trial Court Branch 150 reset Trillanes' hearing from March 20 to May 27. The Philippines' budget surplus grew nearly fourfold in January this year amid efforts to speed up public spending to maintain the government's projects. The Bureau of Treasury reported a surplus of 44.5 billion pesos, or nearly four times higher from last year. The national government earned 256.7 billion pesos and spent 212.2 billion pesos this month. The Bureau of Internal Revenue collected 185.1 billion pesos and the Bureau of Customs collection is at 48.4 billion pesos. Revenues by the Bureau of Treasury reached 9 billion pesos and the other offices earned 12.8 billion pesos. National Treasurer Rosalia de Leon attributed the budget surplus to a slowdown in spending while the government is operating on a reenacted budget. Congress has yet to submit to Malacanang the enrolled copy of the 2019 national budget. Philippine Airlines announced it will transfer some of its international flights from Nino Aquino International Airport Terminal 2 to Terminal 1. The flag carrier says they want to distribute flights among the Naia terminals to help minimize passenger congestion in these areas. Beginning March 31st, flights to and from New York Auckland, Hanoi, and Phnom Penh will use Naia Terminal 1. Meanwhile, Los Angeles flights depart from Terminal 2 and arrive at Terminal 1. Honolulu flights continue to use Terminal 2 for departure and arrival. And Ho Chi Minh flights will also continue to use Terminal 2. For passengers with connecting flights, PAL has inter-terminal shuttle buses plying Terminals 1, 2, and 3. A total of 32 towns in Iloilo have reported losses due to the dry spell. The Iloilo Provincial Agriculture Office said the towns of Maasin, Miagao, Leganes, San Joaquin, and Estancia have been added to the first 27 towns which reported losses in February 23. Miagao and San Joaquin are located in southern Iloilo, which experiences the shortest rainy season in the province. The PAO fears that the province's 1 million metric tons harvest target for rice will not be reached this year as more municipalities report rice crop damages. It has asked farmers to wait for the rainy season and maximize their available technology and inputs once cropping starts. The military calls for peaceful elections in Samar. Meanwhile, the Bacolod city government is set to open over a thousand summer jobs. More on these and other stories from the provinces from Janice Cabe. In Samar, the Philippine Army urged local candidates not to resort to violence and vote buying in the May 2019 midterm elections. Samar has always been in the limelight during election period due to poll-related violence. 70 villages in the region are listed as areas of concern. In Cavite, the DA Agricultural Training Institute tapped media practitioners to promote its programs and projects to a wider audience. It plans to use social media, print, and TV as strategic channels for possible course offerings or to download the latest information. Some 3,000 farmers have already graduated in the past three years on hog raising, corn, and organic farming. In Bacolod City, the local Public Employment Services Office, or PESO, will hire over 1,000 youths for the special program for employment this summer. Those who are 15 to 30 years old are qualified so long as they are in school, 
while out-of-school youth who also want to earn money for enrollment will be accepted. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Up next, environmental group Greenpeace expresses alarm over the death of marine animals due to plastics. And rubber farmers in Mindanao and Palawan launches local tire brand. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Environmental group Greenpeace has called for immediate large-scale action against plastic pollution. Campaigner Abigail Aguilar says the frequency of which marine animals are dying due to plastic ingestion is a call for action to manage production, consumption and disposal of plastics. Aguilar cited how whales, dolphins and turtles have died in Thailand, Indonesia and the Philippines in less than a year due to ingestion of plastics. Aguilar made the call after a young Cuvier's beak whale was found dead in Compostela Valley. It digested 40 kilograms of plastic. An examination conducted by the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, or BFAR, shows the whale died of starvation and dehydration. And in our foreign news, the National Museum of Modern Art Tokyo is launching Let's Talk Art. It is an English program enabling international participants to enjoy appreciating masterpieces of Japanese art since the 20th century. The museum aims to provide new attractions in Japan to foreign visitors, including a venue for communication. Unlike the regular tour, participants can engage in conversation as they explore three of the hundreds of works from the museum's MoMAT collection and discuss the art and culture of Japan and other participating countries. The MoMAD collection is Japan's sole exhibition of artworks enabling visitors to sense more than 100 years of the history of modern Japanese art. In sports, people's champ Manny Pacquiao's next possible opponent is welterweight Errol Spence Jr. in case a rematch with the Floyd Mayweather Jr. does not materialize. Spence defended his IBF crown at the AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. He scored a convincing win over Mikey Garcia via a unanimous decision. Spence is just one of the many hungry welterweight aiming for a title fight with Pacquiao. Also targeting Pacquiao are WBO champ Terence Crawford, WBC titleist Sean Porter, and WBA super champion Keith Thurman. Filipino rubber farmers are getting the chance to make their mark on the international market. Using locally grown rubber, they have set out to make their own brand of tires. Here is our report. A group of rubber farmers have stepped up their livelihood with the production of the country's own motorcycle tire brand. The Philippine Rubber Farmers Cooperative, or PRFC, is composed of farmers from Mindanao and Palawan. It leads the effort to develop finished products from raw rubber cup lumps. According to Agriculture Secretary Manny Pinol, the cooperative will help produce Pilipinas Aguila tires. 
He says this marks a small step forward in the program of the Department of Agriculture to elevate the farmer from the status of a raw material producer to the processor and merchandiser of finished products with added value. The Pilipinas Aguila tires are designed for working motorcycles or habal-habal and tricycles. It will be available in the market next month at a lower price. President Rodrigo Duterte will be requested to officially launch the local motorcycle brand in April. The cooperative is expected to gain at least 100 pesos per tire in the sale of the Filipinas Aguila motorcycle tires. Their next move is to manufacture other tire sizes, including tires for small tractors like Kuliglig. DA targets that before the Duterte administration ends in 2022, the country's rubber farmers will have their own tire manufacturing plant in Mindanao. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. The president says not only heads will roll, but both Mainilad and Manila Water may lose their contracts if the water crisis is not resolved. The Sandigang Bayan gives Jingo Estrada and Janet Limnapoles a chance to seek the dismissal of their plunder cases. The Court of Appeals denied Senator Antonio Trillanes' plea to temporarily stop the hearing of the reopened rebellion charges against him. And environmental group Greenpeace expresses alarm over the death of marine animals due to plastics. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And that's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. Good day.